It is 1984, the third year of our persecution, oh, my brothers, oh, Betanauts and Betalogs and fellow members of the Betanese Liberation Front. And still they come, the gray men in the great coats, the storm troopers in their cloud hoppers, and the brown shirts, and the gray shirts in the brown coats. And still they seek us out and pick us off and cart away our gold finger and our roots and our great Muppet caper. Three years, oh my brothers, since the decision banning home video recording of TV shows was handed down by a three-judge panel, combined IQ 30, of the U.S. Court of Appeals in San Francisco. Three years since five million of us went underground with our Betamaxes, our VHSs, our blank tapes, our patch cords, our satellite dishes, and our Wisma gidgets. Three years on horizontal hold. They staged another air raid last week, my brothers. They flew low over the subterranean cubicle in the dread bulk eraser plane. Another of those converted AWACs they never did send to Saudi Arabia. Their giant magnets swept our beta combs, hoping to wipe away our fantasy islands, our Johnny Carsons, our masterpiece theaters, our Mr. Bills, our Richard Simmons shows, our Wizards of Oz's, and our Casablanca's. The news is not good, oh my brothers. Comrade Joseph Kay returned from the front yesterday and reported that the combined military forces of Walt Disney Productions and Universal Studios moved in with their dwarfs and their mice and their incredible hulks and let fly with the dread bulky racers on a hidden vault of tape stored behind a piggly wiggly. There went 132 episodes of the Mary Tyler Moore Show up in a cloud of electrons. There was another speech on the radio today by Jack J. Valenti, president of the Motion Picture Association of America. He called for us to come out of hiding, carrying our tapes over our heads. He said the war against video liberation was costing the movie companies billions of dollars a year. Valenti. We tried to kidnap the corporate imperialist lackey once before, but he was too short. We couldn't find him. Comrade Gunther Kay thinks he saw the top of Valenti's head through the back window of his limousine. We will try again. Next time, we will bring a smaller laundry bag. The fight goes on. Only yesterday, Sister Henrietta Kay was charged with illegal time shifting. She had been caught red-handed, setting her Betamax timer to record soap operas in the afternoon so she could watch them later that night when she got home. They not only confiscated her Betamax, they appropriated her Trinitron. Poor Henrietta was sentenced to three hours of hard labor a night, watching the network primetime schedule exactly as the network scheduled it, with no fast-forwarding through the commercials. And now we wait, oh my brothers, we wait for the terror from Hollywood, our nation's capital, to come again in the night. Even Mike Wallace is on our trail now. Creepy peepy -pee cameras roam the countryside. The eyewitness news jet-propelled traffic copter scours the landscape. Comrade Hector K. thinks he even saw Magnum P.I. casing the terrain in his Ferrari. Charlie's angels are hidden under the bed. Benny Hill is in the closet. The Ten Commandments are buried in the backyard. I have cleverly disguised a videotape of Fahrenheit 451 as a book. They only told us we could pursue happiness, oh my brothers. They never did say we could record it and play it back. I'm Tom Shales.